Karen Billamoria, uh, founder and chairman of Cobra Beer Independent Crossbench Beer House of Lords. Today I will share the story of building a consumer brand from scratch and an entrepreneurial journey of coming up with an idea as a student at Cambridge and then putting that idea into action, uh, starting off with all the odds stacked against one, uh, with little or no means, uh, and going out there and, and implementing it. And it's a roller coaster journey, lots of ups and downs, where I nearly lost my business three times. And I will be talking about the ups and the downs of building a business. And what is today, I'm proud to say, Cobra Beer, a household name in Britain, and trying to make it a global beer brand in my joint venture with Molson Coors, one of the world's largest brewers. I started off in, a, in my 20s, very soon after I finished my studies, and I had a very clear mission from the beginning, and that was to brew the finest ever Indian beer and make it a global beer brand. And I'm still trying to do that. Uh, the first part of the mission, I think we've achieved very successfully. We are the finest ever Indian beer. We've won 73 gold medals in the Mon Selection World Quality Awards uh, since 2001. And uh, the global beer brand part of it, we've been exported to about 30 or 40 countries so far around the world, but a long way to go. I've been very lucky that I've had great influences in my life and uh, people who inspired me. And two in particular, one was my own father, who retired as Commander-in-Chief of the Central Indian Army commanding 350,000 troops. And I was brought up in the Indian Army from my childhood, and I saw my father from commanding a battalion of 1,000 troops, uh, his Gurkha battalion, which he commanded in war in the liberation of Bangladesh, to commanding a brigade, to a division, to a corps, to an army. And I saw my father actually practice leadership in action, and he was a brilliant leader. And I learned a lot from him about having a, a, not just an efficient team, but a happy and an efficient team, about the way he praised people in public, about the way he created this wonderful atmosphere and was a very inspirational leader, where he was firm and fair. And um, I learned from him, and I also was inspired by my great-grandfather, my mother's grandfather, Didi Italia, who was an entrepreneur, who built his business from scratch, who lost his business three times, uh, I nearly lost my business three times, and who built up a very successful business empire, had a large family, looked after his family very well. I've never heard a bad word said about him, did a huge amount of philanthropy and public service, and was a member of the upper house in India, the equivalent of the House of Lords, the Rajya Sabha. So I've in many ways followed in his footsteps uh, by being an entrepreneur and now being in the upper house here in Britain. I think that there is no one checklist of leadership uh, that you can tick and say, that, therefore, this person is a, is a perfect leader. You have charismatic leaders. You have leaders who are very mild in their style. You have hugely inspirational leaders. You have others who are very stern. And both can be effective. Uh, if you go back to remembering your teachers at school, I often say to people, some of your best teachers were probably the strictest teachers, but you learned the most from them and you respected, respected them. In the same way, leaders can be uh, in, seen to be very strict, but as long as people know where they stand, they can be very effective. And I think the, most, the best definition of leadership is that of authentic leadership, where people will believe you as a leader with all your strengths, but also with all your faults, quite often with your faults being quite visible, which people don't mind. In fact, they appreciate that. Uh, and then people will do the extraordinary things for you. Then people will do things that they may not normally like to do, but will do because of the leadership and the direction which they're being pointed to and taking people, having a vision and taking people with you. And, and I think it's, it's a very powerful thing being a good leader. And, I, and my favorite saying of the difference between leadership and management is that management is doing things right and leadership is about doing the right thing. In building a business, the challenges are enormous. The pressures are enormous. And one of the key traits of successful entrepreneurs is that they have had the guts to stick it through. They've been able to persevere when others would give up. And I think that is a great strength to have, 
to be able to bounce back when you're completely down and out, when you've nearly lost everything, to rebuild uh, yourself and your business and to keep going. And, and, I, and I think it is not for everybody, uh, which is why many businesses don't succeed. What really helps is having a lot of support around you because you can't do these things on your own. And it's a cliche term to have a team, but you really appreciate your team in the bad times. In fact, the true test of leadership is not in the good times, it's in the bad times. And when you have a great team around you, that team supports you not just in the good times, they support you in the tough times. And I've been really lucky. I've had some fabulous people who have stood by me, uh, including one of my directors who's been with me for over 20 years. And I always joke and say I've been married to Samson longer than I've been married to my wife. And of course, having a family that can support you is very important. And I've been very lucky that I've had a very supportive wife who I met a year after we started Cobra. In fact, we celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary this week. Uh, and she has seen me through all the ups and downs and supported me through all the ups and downs. If I'm giving advice to people about building a business, um, or operating in today's environment, I say there are really three things to succeed in business. One is to think global from day one. And I think in today's world and in the integrated um, world that we live in, with phenomenal communication, amazing travel capabilities, you've got to think global from day one, even if you're a small two-person business. And we did. We used to manufacture our beer in India and import it from Bangalore into the UK, sell it here in the UK and export it around Europe from day one. And I think that's a phenomenal. And, in, and now with Molson Coors, we have this global joint venture and we also operate in India for India and manufacture in India for India. The second thing is to have the right attitude. And I think this applies as much to a company or an entrepreneur as it does to a country. And I think you've got to have confidence. And you have confidence in your capabilities and your abilities. And I think in Britain as a country, we put ourselves down. We don't market ourselves well enough. We are still one of the 10 largest economies in the world. We're still at the top table of the world, G7, G8, G20, even the European Union. We're not a member of the Euro, but we're at the top table, member of the Security Council of the UN. We have the best capabilities in this country, whether it's advanced engineering, whether it's aerospace, whether it's beer, whether it's universities, whether it's design, whether it's architects, whether it's accountants, whether it's lawyers, I could go on. We have the best of the best capabilities in this country and we should be proud of it and confident of it, but confident, not arrogant. Confident with humility, not hubris. And that, I think, can make one succeed as a business, as a country, as an entrepreneur. And the third, the most important thing, is with the right values. It is better to fail with the right values than to succeed with the wrong values. And the right values is all about integrity. And the word integrity was brought home to me by the new master of Magdalen College. When he was Archbishop, Rowan Williams came and addressed the Zoroastrian Parsi community, of which I'm a member, in Harrow and was the first visit by an Archbishop of Canterbury to the Zoroastrian community. And after my speech, um, Archbishop Canterbury said, Lord Billamoria has used the word integrity twice in his speech. And the word integrity, the Parsi community are renowned for practicing integrity. And he said, the word integrity comes from the Latin word integer, integrum, which means wholeness. You can only practice integrity if you are whole within yourself and then you have the confidence to practice integrity. And I found that very powerful. And it all really came home to me in this last week when in Parliament uh, we had the tributes to Nelson Mandela in which I was privileged to speak in. And yesterday we had an enormous, huge memorial ceremony in Westminster Hall. And, and in my speech um, I mentioned about how Nelson Mandela would love uh, reading his favorite poem to his fellow inmates at Robben Island, the poem by William Ernest Henley, Invictus. And the last line of the poem, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. And I think that should be the entrepreneur's creed, because we are masters of our fate, but we're also the captains of our soul. So we've got to do it the right way. We've got to aspire and achieve against all odds with integrity.